so hot. I think I need a fan, I really... It's 28 degrees. This is gonna slide off my face. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to 10 cheap-ish rare houseplants. I say cheap-ish because obviously the price of plants at the minute is a little bit insane compared to what it was say maybe two years ago. For this list, I've tried to keep the prices down to double digits as much as possible, but I need you to know how difficult that is because of course, if something's in double digits, it's probably not really that rare anymore. So I kind of had to find a harmony between rarity and price. Not only that, of course, but the prices here in the UK and EU are a lot different to, say, prices in the US. So I've done my best to comprise a list for you today. I've also tried to keep the sizing pretty fair as well. I'll be specific when we get to each individual plant because I do actually have every plant to show you today. Whether they're a good specimen or not is a different scenario because I have some really gangly ones, but I have every plant here to show you today. Please also bear in mind that the upload date of this video will tell you a lot. Because if you are watching this in 2023 and all the prices have dropped or something's gone super rare or something's gone super non-rare and it's cheap, be aware of the fact that I've recorded this at the time I have. So if you are a little bit unsure, just look at the upload date on Le Video. So I'm not gonna do these in any particular order because honestly, it didn't really feel right. So all of these plants are either in the late two digit range to early three digit range, or if I say double digits, treble digits, now, a couple of people have been confused on what I mean by this. When I say low trebles, I mean a three-digit number that is on the low side. So I could mean anywhere between 100 and, say, 400, because I would say anything over 400 is probably mids. So that's what I'm talking about there. Same thing if I say three digits, that's what I'm talking about. If I say high doubles, I mean 80, 90, something like that. So I will tell you the specific numbers as we go along, but please be aware, these prices are so subjective, so... Oh, no hate. Hopefully I don't get too sweaty over the course of this. I've got my phone to help me out because I did do some Googling on some prices for these plants. So the first cheap-ish plant on my list today is none other than one of my favorites, actually. This is Syngonium Pink Splash. I'm gonna do my best to turn it to the camera. There is Lekka, it may be noisy. So of course this Syngonium is named Pink Splash due to the way that the leaves present themselves, which of course is splashes of pink. I think this is also known as Syngonium Red Spot, but I think more often than not now, now we're finding them as pink splash so if you want to search for this plant look for syngonium pink splash and you should get one of these if it doesn't look like this then it's likely to be a miss id now what did i have these down for price because these are actually very very good so for the uk i have around about 80 pounds 80 euros for example for one of these us is a little bit more expensive it's around about 120 somewhere in that region so it's still quite affordable for a rare plant not only that but i mean i go on about syngoniums all day long on essentially how easy they are to grow how easy they are to propagate so if you want to buy one of these and start out as a beginner this is a great one as to be honest is more syngoniums i just selected this one for the video because this one's quite popular right now there are some other rare syngoniums but they're a little bit more expensive than this one so in honor of keeping things at a lower price i selected this one but yeah if you want to buy one of these you can really propagate and make a return on them quite quickly actually i would say because these do grow quite fast propagations don't often fail either so i guess they're just an all-rounder i just love syngonium can you tell i just love syngonium so if you don't mind a bit of pink or it's maybe something you're looking for then syngonium pink splash is really really nice the next plant on my list has gone through a little bit of a journey, actually. This used to be so much more rare than what it is now. Now, don't get me wrong, they're still rare, but in a lot of cases, you can see big growers or even big box stores starting to roll these things out. To be honest, I kind of saw it coming because they're so easy to look after. They're not the easiest to propagate, but they are really easy to look after and they're very tough. So in that sense, I could kind of see it coming that they would be a lot more ready for a domestic setting in like different areas of the world because they're just a really good plant. And that plant is none other than the beautiful Philodendron Melanochrysum. Let me tip him up a little bit. See, oh my God, how pretty is he? I tip him that way. He's just beautiful, isn't he? So as I said before, these plants are really, really tough. They don't propagate amazingly, but they do propagate. They're not the hardest thing in the world. They are, however, quite tough. The leaves are reasonably meaty, I would say, for something that is velvety, because if you can't tell, 
if I just tip this pot forward, the leaves are very, very dark and very, very velvety. Not all of the time, but a lot of the time, velvety philodendrons have a bit of a different care or they just, they need a little bit more. These ones are actually really easy. And if you look at the tips of the leaf, in a lot of velvety plants, these tips can go because, you know, they've either been underwater or something like that. But melanocrysum hold themselves down really, really well. And for that reason, I'm quite a fan of them. I always have been. I don't actually have one in here, which is kind of crazy because they're one of my favorites. So as of recording this video, we have around about 100 in the UK and the EU. So that would be round about 100 pounds, round about 100 euros. You might find it for slightly more or slightly less than that. But at the moment, that's the going rate. I would say maybe the plant would be this size. I think it would be the same amount of leaves, but taller. I'm pretty sure that there's several cuttings in here and that's why it's very, you know, flat and bushy. There's more than one cutting. So in the US, it is up to 200 US dollars at the minute. But I think, and I, I hope I'm not getting this wrong as of recording this video, I'm pretty sure I saw a hit on Google for logies in the US stocking them. Now I'm not saying that they're everywhere or anything like that and they're readily available and you just walk into one now and buy one, probably not. But my point is they are definitely becoming more available and if you want to wait, if you still think that the price is a bit high now, then you can probably just wait a little bit longer and they will gradually come down. So really it's up to you. These are really good value for a rare plant. Also, so if you haven't seen how big they grow, you're in for a treat. I will put an image here of what they basically grow into. They are absolutely stunning. It's not the easiest thing in the world to get them to grow this big, but it can be done. If you really, really want something impressive, go for one of these. They're not too difficult to get. The next plant I do not actually have. It's the one plant in my list that I don't have with me. That's just because it's on the wall and I cannot take it off because it is a shingler. So the next plant on my list is none other than Raphidophora cryptantha. If you don't know what it looks like, I'm having to describe it blind. It is what we call a shingling plant. So the leaves are very, very close together like this in a they've, they have such a beautiful neat formation they're very very nice they have really pretty white veining and they are best grown up a wall a flat surface a board something like that you can put them on a pole but i like to see them on boards or something like that better because i just think they look nicer and they can size up a little bit more but they're a really really pretty plant and honestly they're quite reasonably priced what was the price of this so much cheaper so much cheaper than i thought it was going to be so in the eu UK and EU, I had it at around about 70, so 70 pounds, 70 euros, somewhere in around about that arena. That's not bad. Now, don't get me wrong, you do get them sold around about this size, so maybe five to six inches long. That's probably what you're going to get for that amount of money. But honestly, I think for something rarer, something totally unique, that's a really good one to go for because it's also a lot cheaper than the Dubaia is at the minute, the Monstera Dubaia. In the US, however, I found them to be even cheaper than in the UK and the EU. I found them to be 40 US dollars, somewhere around there. And I thought that was really interesting because so many times I do these videos and I see that a plant in like over here is cheaper than over there. And it's actually the other way around this time. So that was really cool to see that. But I thought that was a really, really good one, especially in the US, if you want something a little bit different, do have a little bit of a Google, have a look at how they grow. It might be something that you might wanna try. The next plant on my list that is rare but cheap-ish, so cheap-ish and rare-ish, I guess you could say, is none other than the Philodendron Florida Ghost. Now, I have better ones than these. Uh, this one's just kind of got lost at the back, actually, but I've propagated them all and they're all very juvenile, and I thought I would rather show you something a little bit more mature than something juvenile where you can't see it. I know I've talked about these on my channel a million times. I'll try and spare most of you the details. Philodendron Florida Ghost is basically special because when leaves are mature, they go this shape, so very similar to a Florida Beauty, a Philodendron Pedatum, something like that. If you don't know what those plants are, that's fine. Just know that they go this shape. And when they come in, and this isn't as bright as they can get at all, when they emerge, they emerge this gorgeous creamy white color and it's very beautiful and I will insert pictures now next to me of what I'm talking about. They are very very gorgeous plants. Now these have gone on quite a journey because for the longest time people weren't interested. Then I think people found them and, and I mean I know I mentioned them a lot on my channel because they're a favorite. People found them and I think they realized that hey this is a plant with a cool shape. It does something cool. It's a kind of easy grower. They're not too hard to get and as with every plant the cycle is where it starts right? It starts there. So yeah, they're quite desirable. I do think in certain places they're more available so the prices are lower. So what did I have for a price on this guy? Now I will tell you 
that the prices of the plants I found weren't this big and they certainly weren't gangly. I would say something like, if I were to take the top off this, so ignore all that, maybe three or four leaf plant, I would say. Something around that, that's kind of the prices I saw. Maybe slightly smaller than this. So I had this down for 80 to 120 UK and AU, so around about 80 pounds, 80 euros, all the way up to 120 pounds, 120 euros. They're quite desirable around here still. The US, similar. I have them down at 120 to 200 dollars. I'm sure many people are still selling cuttings. I'm sure that's not difficult to get, but if you want something a little bit different, go for one of these. I really recommend them. They're one of my favorite plants if you're new to my channel and you haven't heard me ramble on about them every single video that I get the chance to. Okay, the next plant on my list is, I, I nearly didn't put it in and I feel like people are gonna have a go at me for putting it in, but I'm gonna put it in anyway because I honestly think that this is true. So the next plant on my list is much more of a rarity over here in the EU and the UK than it is in the US. I'm fully aware in the US you can get lucky and you can get like a full pot of one of these things. I do know that, but for the most part, you kind of can't. And you certainly can't really get that here in the EU. You'd be getting a very small plant. Without further ado, the next plant on my list that is cheapish and rareish is the Monstera Silter. Picana. Yes, that's kind of all I've got. Um, it's, it's, it's a bit pathetic. I did have a nice big vine, if anybody remembers. I'm sure I showed it on my channel. I think I cut it up to propagate it. And over the last year, with everything going on last year, I think most of them have got lost. So I only really have this one. But anyway, this is Monstera Siltipicana. The best thing I can show you is this cool leaf here. You can't get these in any kind of garden center or anything like that in the UK or the EU right now, I don't think. Definitely not the UK. Now US, as I've said, it's different. So with that in mind, I'm gonna give you the price on these things because it is a monstera. Everyone goes on about Adansonii. No one really goes for these. I don't get it. I think they're incredible, by the way. If you see a full pot hanging, you'll know what I mean. Search for it on Instagram. It's amazing. For over here, I have them at 20 to 40 UK and EU pounds. And in the US, I think they're the same actually. Yeah, they were. So 20 to 40 UK, EU and US. So 20 to 40 pounds, 20 to 40 euros, 20 to 40 dollars. They're around about the same thing. And the weird thing is, this is one of these plants that they are harder to get, so to speak, but there's no demand. And that tells you a lot about demand and the prices of plants and stuff like that. So I honestly think if you're just getting into stuff a little bit different, I think this is a great one to go for. I really, really do. And I do think it's really underrated. So show you again to the camera without tipping like her everywhere. There, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful plant. This is Monstera Siltipicana. This next plant I'm gonna show you, I actually have a bunch of it. However, when I talk about buying this plant, I'm not actually talking about buying a full plant, I'm talking about buying a cutting, and that's because it's starting to take off, but I don't think they're ever sold in full plants yet. I genuinely think these are passed around as cuttings, so that is the reason for that. So when I show you this plant, I'm probably realistically talking about a two to three leaf cutting of this plant for the price that I'm gonna give you. That's really, really important. So the next plant on my list is none other than the Philodendron Cream Splash. I think that's as it is known. This is, it's, it's a little bit all over the place, this one. It's just a big bunch of cuttings in a pot that I have in the shop. I don't know if you can see that there. That's the best example to show you. Basically, it is similar to a Philodendron Brazil, the one with the yellow stripe, but this is different. It has a lot of cream coming through as well. It's not every leaf, or at least not on this one, but it is on most, I would say. It's just really hard to pick them up on camera, but that's those there. Now then, these are up and coming. They're certainly becoming more and more of a thing and more and more cuttings are getting sold and passed around. So this is a little bit of like an up and coming trendy kind of philodendron. I personally quite like them. I'm not crazy about them, but I think I've said this on a previous video anyway. But anyway, the price I have for these. So in the UK and EU, you can expect around about 60 to 80 pounds or euros for a two to three leaf cutting. That's what you can expect over here. I have written down for the USA, I have written down around about $100. As I say, they're, they're getting passed around um, privately more so than shops, I think at the minute. My shop sells them, of course, hence I have them here. But yeah, they're really up and coming. And I think if, you, if you're comfortable buying cuttings, because not everyone is, and I understand that, if you're comfortable buying cuttings, this could be a really nice one to get. It could be a nice money maker as well, because obviously it's just gonna keep on growing. You can just keep cutting it, selling it or you can cut it and start making a pot like this because you can just keep trimming it off, rooting it, sticking it back in and make a really big beautiful plant. So for that reason I kind of recommend them. Again, not the easiest thing in the world to see 
but there is cream on the leaves right there. And it is different from the Brazil because the Brazil is all yellow. My next plant is a little bit tired looking. I'm gonna be honest. Um, I've had him for a while and I guess he just, he just hasn't done so well. He got forgotten about. That happens a lot in this shop. I have a lot of plants. It can happen. He's also not really a bestseller of the shop by any means because there are other variations of this plant that seem to do better and I totally get why. But I wanted to recommend this one because of course, therefore it is a little bit cheaper. So the next plant on my list, and sorry for the condition of it, this is Anthurium forgetii. This is the first Anthurium on the list. The cute thing about this is its lack of sinus, so it's completely and utterly round on the top. It is very, very cute. Try and hide myself the best I can. There you go. Really, really beautiful plant. Now this plant comes in other variations. I know it comes with white veins, very similar to an Anthurium crystallinum. It also comes uh, in a dark form, which is really sexy. And I don't know if I've got any of those left. I think I just sold them all. Really, really, really nice, the dark form. But of course, those forms are obviously more expensive. So you can go for them if you prefer them, cool. But save your money because they're gonna be more expensive. This one, because it is really underrated, it often gets missed a little bit. It is a little bit cheaper. How much cheaper, you ask? Well, I have here Anthurium Forgetting Eye Regular. I mean, I'm saying it's cheap, but it is one of the more expensive ones on this list. I honestly believe that that is down to the fact it's an Anthurium and they always have a higher price tag, possibly due to how temperamental they are when people and shops, shops, private sellers import them and there's just generally a lot of loss. So I think for that reason, the prices are always boosted a little bit, but I have here anyway, either 100 to 150 UK and AU. So 100 to 150 pounds, 100 to 150 euros. And for the US, I have $150. So it's not, insane. If It's one of the, the more cheaper kind of exotic anthuriums that you can get. And they are very, very cute. Again, Instagram them because this isn't necessarily doing them justice, but they are very, very gorgeous plants. I do recommend. They're also very tough, specifically the normal forget the eye, actually. They're very, very tough. This guy has been through the mill and I'll tell you how I know. I can tell because of the amount of just wasted you know, growth points on the stem that have just died off from neglect. So that's how I know it's tough because it's still alive and I didn't know it existed. So there you have it, Anthurium Figetii, absolutely adorable. The next plant on my list, I'm pretty sure this was in like my first ever rare plant wish list. I could be wrong, but I, I think it might have been. It's definitely been in a rare plant index and all the rest. So this plant's gone on a little bit of a journey. I think most of the production of this plant tends to lie within the Netherlands a lot, and these were hard to get. Then they were coming out a lot. I think it was 2019, they came out quite a lot and then they kind of died down again. But you do find them. They're not impossible to find because they have been mass produced. So the next plant on my list is none other than the Alocasia Dragon Scale. This ain't the best one. This has been, it's been underwater actually. It's fine now. It's growing a new leaf here. Don't know if you can see. If I turn it onto an angle, you'll see why absolutely these plants are just the best. Uh, if you can see that, if you're not aware of these plants, then you are in for a humongous treat. Now the care isn't too bad. They're not really as thirsty as say an allocation Sabrina, for example, they're quite thirsty. Um, these are a little bit less thirsty and that's because they have juicy leaves. So you can kind of tell. They are definitely worth it if you can find one because they just look so awesome. They look like something literally out of Game of Thrones and I've always enjoyed them. Now they should be a little bit stumpier than this. This is leggy because it's been in the dark. So what you should probably have, if this was a, a good looking specimen, the leaves would probably start at about here, probably half the height of what they are. And you can get these really big meaty leaves out of them. And honestly, they just look the best. I do have a different alocasia. Let me start up and get it over here but I don't think it's as easy to get and I didn't include it in this list but this was the Alocasia Dragon Scale here. This is the Alocasia Silver Dragon. They are a little bit different and to be honest they look more different than they look here. Let me see if I can get it there. Yeah this one's a little bit silver so I think this one is still harder to get. It doesn't grow as well. It really doesn't grow as well. So there is that one, but today we're talking about this one. And the price is UK and AU 20 to 40. So 20 to 40 pounds, 20 to 40 euros, somewhere around that price. And that is very reflective of the fact that they have been mass produced. But in the US, we have them at about 60 to 100 dollars. So the US aren't quite there yet with them. I'm sure it will come down 
down because I'm sure that the growers in the Netherlands will start passing it over to the US. So it may come down even further, but at the minute, those are the prices. So it's not too bad. And for an allocation that's a little bit different, but you can still kind of get it, this is a very nice one to go for. Okay, the second to last plant is a favorite of many people. I would say this plant's gone on a journey. There's times when people didn't want this plant, then it went through the roof, then it tanked again, then it went through the roof, then it tanked again. And I think now it's on the up again. So I don't know what's happening with the supply of these plants. They seem to be very stop and start. It doesn't seem to be a steady stream coming out of, say, nurseries in other countries, for example. The next plant on my list for being pretty cheapish but pretty rare would be the Philodendron bilitae. Now, they're still a good price, don't get me wrong. Obviously, this, this leaf here probably needs to go, but if you don't know what they look like, they look literally amazing. They're still a good price at the minute, but my point is they would have been a lot less. So when I said before that they're expensive now, they are compared to what they were. You would previously be able to get one of these this size for maybe around about, I want to say like 60 UK to EU kind of price. I'm not sure about US, but these were never that bad back in the day. They've gone on a little bit of a journey though. Let me tell you how much they are at kind of as I'm recording this video, 150 to 200 across the board for a regular size plant. Possibly this size, possibly slightly smaller than this actually, 150 to 200. So they've definitely gone up. That said, I do think they're worth it. If you've never seen this plant before, of course, I will explain why it's cool, why it's hot. These leaves are reasonably leathery. They're quite tough. They're very humidity tolerant. No problem doing these in 50% humidity or maybe a bit less. And they have these amazing orange stems, which in all honesty, on my video, they don't look all that orange. I think I'm more orange than the Billetai, but you've got my word that they are orange. They really are. Very, very pretty plant. This one's like really wobbly because I think the actual chunk that the built eye is growing from is super small, but it's got a ton of roots coming off two big roots. So it's really wobbly in the pot. I just checked it this morning actually before this video because I think it could be sellable very soon. Let's see what happens with this leaf here. So yeah, really, really good plant. It is one of the more expensive ones on this list. Of course it is but it is kind of obtainable. It really depends on, on wh what point in the cycle that you hit it, because these seem to come out in a batch and then they disappear. And then they come out in a big batch and then they disappear. I have some in the shop, but I've had them for a long time. A lot of them I've had since like August last year. I have some huge ones and then I have ones this size and a couple smaller than this, which hopefully should be ready. But if you're looking for, you know, a, a kind of statement plant that is tough, go for one of these. Not only that, but they hold their own. These petioles are really, really, really strong, way stronger than a lot of other philodendrons. So in that sense, they're kind of tough. They can withstand you brushing past them without knocking them and, you know, causing a bit of a disaster. So in that sense, they're really nice. Personally, I still think they're on the cheaper end, but they're nowhere near what they were. And I do acknowledge that. Okay, last plan on my list, there is a little bit of variation again in price from UK and EU to the US. This one is a little bit different. This one's gone through a journey as well. This one went through a stage where it went more expensive and then it went really cheap and now it's kind of leveled out a little bit. But I wanted to include this plant, not just because I think it's reasonably affordable, but because it's different. It's a different type of plant. This is the gorgeous Aglaonema pictum tricolor. If you've never seen this plant before, I'm about to blow your mind because it's essentially camel. It's a camel plant. Let's see if I can figure out the best way to rotate this because this is going everywhere. Can I just pull it down? Maybe that's the easiest way. Look at that. Can you see that? That is unbelievable. Look at it. It's literally no exaggeration. It's camouflage. They're not the easiest things to grow in my opinion. I know a lot of people's opinions are going to differ on that. For me, I don't find them the easiest plant in the world. I think it's it's sometimes kind of down to the individual plant as to whether it's easy or not. I've had some pick them that just don't die and I've had others that are given the absolute best care in the world and they just drop dead. So I guess it depends, but they are so, so worth it if you really put the work in and they have, they actually have velvety leaves. I don't know if people knew that or not. See if I can get them closer to the camera again. It's really impossible to show you these without literally ruining everything. There, how insane 
is that plant. So let's just get on to the price. Enough rambling. So for the UK and EU, we have 100 to 150 pounds, 100 to 150 euros for the us we have 150 to 250 so as i was saying in the us they are a little bit more pricey still on the affordable side if you can get them towards the 150 mark i do advise you to make sure that they've got okay roots because they can be a little bit eh, they, they don't they don't love life very much i really can't remember if they ship well I feel like they don't, so just be careful anyway. Not one of the toughest plants in the world, but certainly one of the prettiest. So if you're looking for something completely different, this is quite a nice one to go for. And that concludes my list. Now, I think if I could recommend, you know, if you were to take one thing from this list of like a surefire bet of something you would love, I would possibly say the Syngonium Pink Splash because one, it's the cheapest, two, it grows the quickest and you can propagate it. That's quite a nice one. Monstera Siltipicana is very nice. I do think you wouldn't get much resale value from it because it's not in demand. Maybe that would change though. So maybe that's a nice one to go for if you want something um, cheap. Of course, I'm assuming people are gonna sell these plants on. I'm not trying to be like, oh, you know, these plants are products. It's just nine times out of 10 people do sell cuttings of these plants. Plus we're in the middle of a pandemic. I get it. Get that coin. Literally no problems. That's kind of why I'm, I'm talking about these plants in this way. Ones that maybe don't get, if you're on about just resell, I would say pick them. Don't go for that. Maybe Forgetii, don't go for that either. Allocation Dragon Scale, you could because they do pop themselves quite a lot. Billetai, maybe not either. Mm, depends. I, I would maybe stay away from those if you're just going for resell only. If it's just for you, then obviously go for whatever you like, whatever takes your fancy. If you want literally the easiest plant on this list, then it is without a doubt the Syngonium Pink Splash. I am absolutely melting and that concludes today's video on 10 cheap-ish, rare-ish plants. There's no way I can really title it without kind of going with that, I don't think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you'd like to see any other videos, please leave a request down below. I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you next week. Bye guys.